Great Pyramid was under construction, there was a relentless flow of materials to the building site. A parade of stones on barges moved up the water locks from the Nile River up to the Great Pyramid construction site. The stones on barges traveled up the water locks and into the pond impounded by the casing stones. In previous videos, it was depicted how both casing stones and rough cut interior stones were quickly removed from the barges and set in their final resting places. These empty barges needed to be returned to the quarries so that they could be used again to bring another load of stones to continue the construction of the Great Pyramid. These empty barges cannot go down the series of water locks built into the wall of casing stones. This is because it would interrupt the flow of materials up the water locks. To build and use an additional series of water locks to move empty barges back down would double the complexity of the stone transportation method and it would be unnecessary. There is an additional option available to the original builders which is fast, simple, and efficient. This option is to move the empty barges over the side of the pond impounded by the casing stones and lower the empty barges down the side of the Great Pyramid into the canal that surrounds the Great Pyramid. Stones on barges move up the water locks, but empty barges move over the side of the pond. An empty barge is moved on the rollers. Water is siphoned from the pond and added to the container, which causes the device to pivot. The empty barge has been moved up onto this dedicated machine and is now ready to be moved over the side of the pond. A rope is attached to the empty barge. The empty barge is moved over the side and workers using the rope control its downward descent to the canal that surrounds the Great Pyramid. Although not shown, water is allowed to drain from the container which causes the dedicated machine to move back to its original position and it is ready to receive another empty barge. Instead of using a dedicated machine to move empty barges over the side of the pond, the floating barge crane could also be used for this purpose. How fascinating it is that on the Giza Plateau there are several excavations of various sizes that are known as boat pits. Possibly one of these boat pits held a barge used as a floating crane for this very purpose. The barge crane easily and quickly moves the empty barge over the side of the pond. A rope is attached to the empty barge and this rope is held taut by workers in the pond. Workers using the rope can control the downward movement of the empty barge. After the empty barge was moved over the side of the pond, the empty barge would be lowered down the side of the Great Pyramid until it reached the canal which encompassed the Great Pyramid. Wrapping the rope around the round stone gives the workers in the pond the ability to lower the empty barge down the side of the Great Pyramid 
at the proper rate of travel. Once the empty barge is in the canal which surrounds the Great Pyramid, it joins the parade of empty barges which make their journey back to the quarries so that they can bring additional stones back up to the building site. This progression of stones on barges moving up the water locks and empty barges moving over the side is a process that continued 24 hours a day. The procession of empty barges make their journey back to the quarries. The empty barges are headed towards the causeway. Research indicates that the causeway was used to move the empty barges down back to the Nile River. This was done using rollers under the empty barges and ropes to control the rate of speed that the empty barges travel down the causeway. When a level of the Great Pyramid was near completion, the devices used to move barges over the side were simply lifted up and set on top of the next higher level of casing stones. The original builders were geniuses in their use of specialized barges, water locks, the buoyancy of water, an extremely strong bonding agent, and a host of other techniques. The combination of all these factors was what made the construction of the Great Pyramid possible. The dedicated machine is also easily moved in the very same manner. In preparing to lift the dedicated machine to the next higher level, the rollers were moved out of the way. Next, the boat crane was moved into position. The boat crane quickly lifts the dedicated machine up and sets it on top of the next higher level of casing stones. No strong back muscles are required. Workers put the rollers back in place and the dedicated machine is ready to operate again. The versatile, adaptable, powerful, controllable, and fast techniques for moving massive amounts of payloads depicted in these videos is how the Great Pyramid was built. The following video provides information about the workers and how they were brought up to the pond where the bulk of the construction process occurred as well as how workers were moved back down after the end of the work shift. Subsequent videos will show how the largest stones were moved and set in place, as well as how the capstone, if there ever was one, was placed on top of the Great Pyramid.